Okay, we are filming. All right, we have a security guard. In okay, everyone, welcome. We're here at Virtual Vince, who is our human patient simulator. He's a robotic patient used to train medical students, residents, doctors, paramedics, nurses, PAs in the art of medicine and emergency medicine and also anesthesiology. The anesthesiology department uses this mannequin. Uh, this guy, you call, this whole setup here is about $500,000. You break it, you buy it. Okay. Um, he's got artificial heart, artificial lungs. So he's breathing with compressed air. His breathing's not working real well right now. We may try to reboot him a little later and get those lungs working better. But you could see he's blinking. And if you want to put your hand over his pupils, tell everybody what you see. Do a good job right Yeah, now lift up. See his they pupils, dilate. they respond to light. Look, right? Anything smaller? Yeah. He also has these, these little gold discs where you can actually shock him and defib him. You can inject drugs. There's a drug port. So you can actually, right here, you can actually inject drugs here and he will respond. Um, you can do CPR. Um, I want everybody to feel the pulses. Feel here at the wrist, at the elbow, at the carotid, at the top of the foot, at the groin. You can get the femoral. Everybody get in there. We're all friends. And of course, his pulses will change upon his condition. If he's sick, his pulses will screw up. You know, give some epi, his pulses will go up. Does he sit up? No. Now he will produce urine. Let me sneak back in. And this is Vince, but with a screwdriver we can turn Vince to Vincenna. Oh, Vince, this is kind of half Vince, half Vincenna now, isn't that a beautiful thing? So we're all confused now, aren't we? So we can change it, we can change the genitalia out. We can practice putting a bully in the male and the female. That kind of thing. Uh, you can also do a super cubic tap, meaning you can go in and, and try to pull urine out over the pubic bone. And he's got some other things. Some of these holes here we can talk about. Uh, maybe, maybe this one right here. Kobe. Yes. Let's say uh, you got finally nailed a nice summer job, right? And uh, before you go to work, you got to uh, you cut down coupons like you hear every Saturday morning. You're, you know, financially, a, a smart man. So you've got a pair of scissors and the phone rings. So you run to get your cell phone with the scissors. Yeah, you shouldn't do that, should you? No. So you trip and the scissors end up in your chest right here. And you fall to the floor a little bit, but you jump up and you go, I'm OB. It's no big deal. I'm all right. You, know? you pull the scissors out. You immediately collapse to the floor, gasping for air. Why? After he pulls the scissors out, does he have a issue? Yeah. The pressure, right? You're talking in a, a broken kind of a thought process here. Yeah. Post hockey game concussion. Say well, again. The pressure in the lung okay. uh, decreased. Decreased. Right? There's a way, yeah, pneumothorax. So what's uh -huh. happening? What, what do we say? He has a blank lung. Collapse. 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 So that's pneumothorax. So you're right. There was an equalization of the pressure as the air rushed in the hole. Mm -hmm. So instead of breathing through his mouth, he's breathing through this hole, which causes the lung to collapse. And since it's sticky and wet, it doesn't reinflate. So how do we fix that? <coughs> that does help a little bit. But you can also go in there and pull some of the air out, right? Put in a chest tube, which is a big tube. And kind of collect some of that out and then take that shut. And usually it's not a big hole because scissors. All right, let's say now you got your summer job, and your summer job is mowing grass at the White Castle Amateur Place. You're supposed to mow the grass in the parking lot. So you do it every morning and you hit a, uh, a beer bottle. The bottle shoots out, hits the wall, spins, and lodges in your chest. 
and you go, I'm, I'm okay, I'm Obi. But then you kind of get a little woozy and you collapse to the ground. You pull the bottle out and you're messed up. You're rushing to the ER. What is your problem? Why are you dying? Uh, is he supposed to breathe, Chris? He's not breathing. Should we reboot him? Yeah. Why don't we reboot him? Can you reboot him, Chris, and we'll, we'll just keep talking about this scenario. Thank you. Um, so well, what does he have now? He had a pneumothorax. What does he have now? He has a hemothorax. Your chest filled with blood. So now you, gotta, so now you need to put that big chest tube in here. Before, you could have got away with a syringe and pulled the air out. Now you got to put a big chest tube in there and pull all that blood out of there. It's usually hooked to a pump. You could be in the hospital for a couple days. It's a long slowly reinflate, stitch this up. So, all right, let's pick on Pablo. Okay, okay Pablo, you got a new car, right? What do you drive? A Cube, a Yugo? What do you? What do you do? You like to drive a bus? Do you have it all painted with flowers and stuff? No. Oh, you mean public transit? That's yeah. very conscientious of it. Yes, that cuts yes. down on our carbon exactly. footprint. Let's take me. All right, that's very good. So let's pretend you borrowed a car. What do you want to drive? Give me any car. I'm um, going to go my friend, uh, uh, my friend's car, BMW. You got okay. a BMW? Yeah. Don't you just get yeah. out of here? <laughs> <laughs> just pass med school and go directly to whatever. All right, Shell, you got your you got your Beamer, right? You're driving your Beamer and like. You do every Saturday morning, you do donuts in the uh, Burger King parking lot. Okay, I remember and you're doing donuts, waving to the girls. You, know, <laughs> you lose control. Bam! You hit a telephone pole. Okay. It's only about 30 miles an hour. You get out of the car, you bump your head on the windshield, you bump your chest on a steering wheel. You go, don't worry, ladies, I'm Pablo. I'm okay. Later on that night, um, you die. Why? <laughs> what are your theories? Anybody? Theories? Where? Chris, are you still here? Yeah. Do we have a laryngoscope and a tube? I hate to bug you, but if you can find one later, I'd appreciate it. Um, why? You said internal bleeding. Okay, what? Let's be more specific. Let's say the bump, he's got like a nog in this thing and it didn't hurt his head at all. What else did I say? The bump? <laughs> he's got what we call cardiac tamponade, which is bleeding between the pericardial sac and the heart. It could just be a small vein, a bruise, not a big deal. But when the blood's got nowhere to go, because you got a thick connective tissue covering called the pericardium, it strangles the heart and you can stop it. You can stop it. So you've watched House and ER and Grey's Anatomy, they go, cardiac cabinet, cardiac cabinet. They go, with a big needle. Yeah. That's what that hole is for practicing the pericardiocentesis. There's actually a fluid sac, wow. so they can go with a big needle, and if the students hit the right spot, they pull the fluid out. All they got to do is pull out like 30 cc's. Here's good as new. Cardiac tampon. Is it tamponade or tamponade? Oh, don't they have to tamponade go or tamponade? Tamponade. You nod out. Tamponade. You, you die. But what if so they, they have to like, fix whatever that's so ruptured? No, because it's a bruise. You know, you can bruise. I can uh, bruise your liver you right now, and it won't hurt you all. You bleed a little in a clot. I mean, that thing might have already clotted, but it's too late because all that blood is in there. Okay. It's not big, really a big issue. You can actually get stabbed in the heart since there's so much tension in the left ventricle. It can actually close up and hold, keep you from dying. It might ooze a little bit. So how did the, the crocodile hunter, how did he die? Well, he got stabbed plus poison directly into his uh, system. I'm not saying you should stab yourself in the heart. <laughs> no, but they say that if he had it removed, he could have survived. If you hadn't pulled the thing yeah, out. Yeah. yeah, because once you pull that out, you kind of open things mm -hmm. up. And that was a big, jagged, ugly stinger. Very sad. All right, so we've learned a couple of things. What have we learned? Let's review, Pablo. Three things. Uh, well, we just learned about the tamponade. Yeah, tamponade. Tamponade, you nod out when you. Uh, let me see, I kind of got really like no, 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 no. This hole right here. No, 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 no. And this hole. It's called a pneumo, pneumothorax and hemothorax. Okay. Pneumo is Latin for air, by the way. 
he knows Latin. All right, so there you go. All right, how's everything going? Are you okay? He still never breathed though, Chris, but that's okay. Did Chris go away? Did he run away? No, he's no breathing. Yeah. Is he breathing, you guys? He might have a problem with the air bladders, Chris. He might be punctured. Or Wow, is that good meaning? He doesn't really, it's just chest, chest, chest. Yeah, chest. You rebooted him, you didn't. Uh, yeah, I, don't I can hear the uh, bellows going. Yes. Anything else? All right. You don't, you don't, you don't think you got a little bit of soap, do you? No. Sorry. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. All right, we're going to do another scenario here. All right. Pablo. We'll all play between Pablo and You've been waiting and waiting for weeks. Uh, you've been running to the mailbox every morning. Finally, you do the dance of joy because your Justin Bieber tickets came in the mail. <laughs> yes. Baby, oh baby, your life of the hell sings. They're there, so you get to go to the concert, right? Now, you know you want to look good for the concert. You, you put on some love handles over the summer or whatever, so you start jogging 10 miles a day. You do not drink enough, and you haven't eaten in four days. Is that a good thing? Of course not. No, it's not a good thing. So it's 90 degrees out. You're going for a jog. All of a sudden, you get a little dizzy. You grab your chest, and your monitor looks like this. Ooh, that Johnny on the spot there. What's happening? Blood pressure's going down. Yeah, but look at that upper trace. I'll go over what the traces are. Yeah. This is the EKG, the electrical activity of the heart. This is the blood pressure, 82 over 58. You know, that's systolic over diastolic, normally 120 over 80. This right here is the pulmonary arterial pressure. We don't pay attention to that too much, but this is the central venous pressure. If you were to put a catheter or a sensor in any big vein in the body, like the femoral or the inferior vena cava, that would tell you how much pressure is in your veins. So you can see how low the pressure is in a big vein and how high it is in an artery. You cut an artery, the blood goes to the ceiling, right? What is he having with that ugly EKG? What would we call that? Cardiac arrest. Cardiac arrest. He calls his own groans. Yeah, he's having a heart attack. He screwed up his electrolytes. We're not eating and drinking. We're getting too excited about Justin Bieber. He's going all hip hop now. He's going all bad. It ain't working for him, though, is it? So, what are we going to do for Pablo? Let's say this is Pablo. Let's not all stand around and watch your friend die. What do you want to do? Oh, yeah, all foods are always a good thing. You can put fluids in. But he's, he's dying. And if this is <laughs> drinking in about two minutes, it goes to this. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, that's what I was thinking. It's like that. There, look at that rhythm. What do we call this rhythm? That rhythm was called uh, tachycardia, the first one. Ventricular tachycardia. Now we're in force B fifth or death. Right now the heart is twitching like a sack of maggots. There's no organized love dub. It's that's what you get What is AFib? What, what would that look like? AFib would be you'd have almost a normal EKG, but the little lump that that corresponds to the atrium would have that kind of a wiggle to it. So you'd have a the heck did you just throw in there? A fit? Yeah. That's A fit. So you see, you got a little squiggle, and then you got the normal URS complex there. All right, put it back in course, uh, ventricular fit. All right, your friend is laying here dying. What are we going to do? You guys save him. If you had the paddle shock him. Okay, go, uh, go through the motions there. There's no battery, so you can fake it. Wheel that card here a little closer. There you go. Put one paddle here, one paddle here. Beautiful. And what is, what do you do now? That's if you had the conductive jelly. You do that, you put it on. Now what do you do? You count the three and clear. Yes. Why three? Why do you yell clear? Because you want the shock to go to end and not the other. You don't want to kill all your friends. You may be touching the bottom. Yeah. Very good. I do it again. Stand clear. One, two, three. All right, it's not helping, so give up with that. <laughs> you can see his eyes are closed. Yeah. He's not breathing. It's all going to do for me. We now need chest compressions. And 
Yeah, CPR. So a little high. Look for the xiphoid, okay. which is the little part that sticks out from the sternum and goes just above that. And she should be making a move around a little bit because you're not making a wave. Try it up, try it down. There you go. See, you're generating a wave. One. You got one wave. <laughs> Explore around a little it's bit. It's hard. It is. It's a lot harder to think about. Oh. Uh, okay. And when you do that, you can actually get the blood pressure up. See the blood pressure? You're acting as a heart. You're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> No pulse, he's dying. No, try everybody, it's try it. It's hard. It's really hard. You want to make sure you leave your elbows locked straight. Everybody can give it a go if they want to try it. So far, Pablo, we're, we're selling your organs on eBay right now. We got your pizza on eBay right now. It's 35,000. Nice one. 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 Chris, don't learn to scroll anymore. Do we have one hidden here? No, that's a good one. In the one? Yeah. You guys see those red tools? We got the blade. Red toolbox. This goes hard. Everyone be scared. That's what I have to learn. Because when you're... You said... You got a lot of questions. You can't really get on the table. You're too short. Ah! You're not going to have a light. You're not going to have a light. Higher, higher. But you guys will learn to do that. All right. Did anybody get, oh yeah, finally, you got some good yeah. pulses. That's good. Melissa's All right. Melissa's the sketch. I, I have it on film and I will watch it for the <laughs> second time. <laughs> Why I'm at home watching re reruns yeah. of the OC. <laughs> All right. There's another problem. Pablo loves to chew whole packs of Bubblicious gum while he jogs. So as he collapses, he swallows a whole lump. So he's not getting any air. Because you're supposed to be you're supposed to be breathing for him. It's what is it? 30 to one now, or 15 to 31, 31, 32, 32. 32. And you're supposed to do it to stay alive, stay alive. Uh, 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 uh. Alright, what's your name? Amin? Amna. Amna. Yeah. Okay. I want you to intubate. So be careful. Are you right handed or left handed? Both. Oh, switch it or very good. Put this in here. You're going to then go with the, the left hand. You're going to Get under the tongue, lift up, and try to visualize the vocal cords. You can assist her. And then you're going to cram that tube in there. And then you're going to hook up the ambu bag. That's that blue bag. And you're going to breathe for Pablo. Wow. Excellent. You're doing a good job. Could you put it under the tongue? Well, you, you put it, it's actually you're on top of the tongue. Think of the orientation. No, I'm in the, uh, yeah, the, blade. the blade. Yeah. Well, think of how you're laying. You're actually putting it, if you're turned upside down, you're putting it on top of the tongue, and okay. pushing the tongue down and out of the way. Because you're pushing it out of the way, it kind of goes underneath the tongue. You're trying to see the epiglottis. Right? So. All right, put the bamboo bag on there. Oh, there you go. It's open. Give him some, a couple more chest compressions there. You guys gave up on Pablo a little soon. <laughs> His brain is turning to oatmeal right now. <laughs> there we go. And some breaths. And we return to sinus rhythm. Are we awake in there? Yes. Are you downloading yes. uh, uh, Lady Gaga music? Sinus. 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 <laughs> no, now it is. Yes, Pablo, let's give a round of applause for our student doctors. Pablo, you are back. You're living. All right. Yank everything out, and he's going strong. Eyes are open. Pablo has missed the concert, but it's doing okay. All right. Obi won. Obi. All right. Let's say that uh, you wake up. Morning, you're getting ready to get dressed, get, get out, and do your morning workout. What do you, you put on some kind of stretchy spandex or something before you go out there? 
Spanx or something. Yeah, and then you go out for your morning jog. And you're getting ready. You, you grab. Uh, I got a leaf card on under this. It takes away the panty line. So you go out there. You're getting ready to run. And all of a sudden, you feel pain in your right lower quadrant. You're nauseous. You're feverish, and you can't stand up straight. What the heck is this problem? Pain, right lower quadrant, nausea. Abby's got it over here. What do you got? He has appendicitis. What do we do for him? Uh, we take out the So we rush him to, uh, yes, it could be an added enough fiber in your diet. Oh, you said <laughs> crap is what you said. Oh, I thought you said something else. Oh. Okay, anyway, we're, uh, we rush him to Northwestern. You get an emergency appendectomy, right? They put you in your own private little cushy room like they have over there. You're relaxing, eating lime green jello, watching your favorite uh, TV show. What is that? The Bachelor? It is the OC. Uh, one, one Tree Hill and then another big one. That then went on the air too. Though. All right, so he's relaxing in there. He's watching TV. He's relaxing. No, you're watching the movie The Notebook over and over again. Oh, <laughs> And all of a sudden, your monitor changes, and it looks like this. You tracking me there? Guys are good. What do we notice changing on the numbers on the monitor? Student doctors. Blood pressure didn't go up. Blood pressure went down. What about heart rate? Heart rate. What's heart rate? Heart rate. Student doctors, what uh, direction? It's going up. Ah, heart rate's going up. Central venous pressure, his veins are collapsed basically. His blood pressure's going down, yet his heart rate is going up. What is his problem? Why is he dying? He doesn't want to die watching the notebook. What is the problem? You're dying, and you're giving the answers here? That's actually pretty big. You want to save yourself with your last bit of consciousness. What did you say? What did you say? No, the diagnosis. Say it loud to the cameras and say it there. Say it to the cameras. Just bleed it out. So we call that internal bleeding, right? Why is he internally bleeding? No, the real cause is the surgery was done at Northwestern and not at <laughs> Yes, the surgeon accidentally left your favorite thing, a pair of scissors, in you when you did the surgery. So when you moved to crawl into the bed or got excited watching an open, you moved a little bit and you kind of tore a little vein, but now you've lost how many liters of blood? Three. Three liters of blood is bled out into your abdomen. And that's, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? What do you think his total blood volume is? Five. Six. I don't know. Huh? Is it six? Six. Right. So you've lost half your blood volume. In, at Northwestern, the surgical wing is eight minutes away. He's going to die in five minutes. How are we going to, what are we going to do next? How are we going to save his life? You are dying and unconscious. Yes, the man called it right. Whenever, you know, people hesitate, but pump them full of fluids, pump them full of blood. What if we don't know your blood type? Uh, the universal oh, number, negative. all what? Negative. Is it all negative? And then we would do what? We would do surgery. We would take him, open him up, pull the scissors out, sew him back up, give you the scissors as a souvenir. We would run with them and the whole cycle would start over again. All right, so that's internal bleeding. So you can see why does the heart rate go up with internal bleeding? Trying to get blood to the rest of The heart is trying to compensate for the loss of blood, but why does it not work? Because it's a large hole, so every time the heart beats, it's pushing blood out, so it's a futile. Same thing happens at the battle. You know, you get shot, the heart's going, I want to keep the blood going to the brain, I want to keep the blood going to the liver and the lungs and the kidneys, but at every beat, the blood is squirting out, so it's a futile cycle. So when you take the scissors out, how do you repair the, the, the hole? Well, they will, vascular uh, surgeons, right, will go in there and do some microvascular surgery. Okay. Yeah, make something up like I do. Right? You could yes. cauterize, cauterize it. No, it would be very fine <laughs> vascular surgery. They, would, they, they could actually just clamp off a small artery. You don't even need it because it's oh. collateral circulation. So they could clip it with a, with a clip or they could have dissolvable suture or whatever. So there you go.
All right, let's do something else. Let's get back to, what's your name? Chantel. All right, Chantel, every Saturday morning, uh, where do you live, Chantel? South side of Chicago. On the south side, um, you ever go down by way south to University Park, Homewood, Flossmoor, that area? There's nothing to see there at all. <laughs> there's, there's, there. there's nothing to yeah, see there. there. Well, let's pretend you go down there. You got a forest preserve nearby? You just hate nature, don't you? <laughs> Let's pretend she's going on a road trip down to visit this man who's convalescing down in the hospital by Governor State University, right? Now, you're distracted because you see some beautiful mushrooms growing in the woods, and you love to pick mushrooms, even though you hate the country. <laughs> so you go out to pick mushrooms, and you feel a little something on the back of your neck. You ignore it, and you keep picking the mushrooms. All of a sudden, you feel a little dizzy, nauseous, you collapse, and your monitor, well, the monitor wouldn't change, but Chantel, this is, let's do this. Stick your own finger in your own mouth. Let's pretend this is you. This will put a rift in space time. You. <laughs> You're going to put your own finger in your own mouth. What do you feel? Kind of toggle it there, master operator. All right? Do like five seconds on, five seconds on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know where we're at? Yeah, <laughs> Alright, keep your finger in there. What do you feel? Describe to the student doctor. It swelled up. So what is your problem? Why are you dying? <laughs> to what? And there's the bee right there trying to escape. In the <laughs> so people say mushrooms, but you didn't eat the mushrooms. You felt something on the back of your neck. So it's called anaphylaxis. Right. What happens? Why is that so deadly? Name some other allergens that can trip common. <laughs> like peanuts, <laughs> peanuts, <laughs> peanuts, <laughs> peanuts, peanuts, peanuts. Shellfish is a big one. Shrimp, plants, pets, dogs, that kind of stuff. What would you do to yourself to save yourself before you lost consciousness? <laughs> you would carry a what with you? Okay. EpiPen. Epi mm -hmm. Very good. Um, what else could she buy over the counter? Benadryl. Benadryl. Make it a little drowsy to save your life. Antihistamine. So that's anaphylactic shock. Very good. Um, what? Okay, why don't we give them some epi? Why don't you guys give them some epi and we'll show what epi does to the monitor. Give them like 200 units. Go to drugs? I don't know. Make up a number. What do you think that's going to do to heart rate? It's like adrenaline. It's going to go. How would you? Oh yeah, baby, you're blowing out that uh, left ventricle. Oh, because of the blood pressure. We triggered all the alarms, so this is obviously an overdose. <laughs> but what's nice about this model? It will wash out in a couple minutes naturally, just like it's in your system. But we won't sit here and wash it. All right, so why don't you go ahead? There's a microphone there. Push the button. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 There you go. Give them some different drugs and yell out what you give them, and we'll end the scenario with that. <laughs> but is there any questions as we torture friends? Adenosine. Adenosine. What do you think adenosine does? Yeah. 200 milligrams. Adenosine they use if you can't do a treadmill test if you're too old or sick. They do an adenosine challenge, right? Yes. What does it do? Increase it. Does it increase it or decrease it? It increases it or decreases it. I don't know. 